So rumour has it the DFT is on the verge of announcing a trial for 25.25 metre trucks in the UK, which would be fantastic. I've just spent a couple of hours driving a Volvo 25.25 metre combination and it works, it's brilliant. It's, it, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? It really is. That trial's ever so important, but it has to be at 60 tonnes, which I think is really important. Agree, to get the benefit. Yep, to productivity benefit. And also it has to be for longer than two years, um, 10 perhaps to get the maximum use out of the, the, the trailers because they're an expensive bit of kit. Yeah, who's going to invest if it's a, a short trial? Agreed. But there's going to be certain segments of the population who think these are too big to be on our roads. They're not going to get around roundabouts and they're not going to fit in our cities. So playing devil's advocate there, there's going to be a few problems. They don't need to fit in our cities. That's the whole point of this, isn't it? We need, we need to make it clear these are going up and down the motorway. I spoke to an operator today He's got um, a number of trucks he reckons he could replace with these and they would only venture 400 metres off the motorway system. Absolutely. But drivers are going to have to take breaks. So they're not going to fit into the motorway service stations. That's going to be another argument. They're too big to get in there. At the moment, but I don't think it will need a massive investment. We've already got... Um, there's already longer bays. You just need to add a few more of those. Maybe, you know, paint a few of the existing bays. Don't forget, we're only talking about potentially replacing 10 or 15% of the UK fleet with these. So that's 10 or 15% of the parking spaces. It's been done on the continent after all. Exactly. What about when they get to an RDC then? So there's going to be limited amount of space, lots of vehicles around. They're big trucks. How are they going to get them onto a loading dock? Well, of course, you break them down, don't you? Um, and of course, in the pallet networks, plenty of those, you drive in, and you drive out, drive so not even any reversing involved. Yeah, definitely. All right, fair point, but that's still not going to stop a good chunk of the public, and I'm thinking of a newspaper in particular, from getting behind these being dangerous, big, aggressive, call them what you want. Juggernauts, no doubt. Juggernauts. But that, let's start right there. These need to be called eco trucks or environmental trucks, uh, high efficiency trucks, because that's what they are. Um, and as far as the public are concerned, why do we need to tell them about it? They, they don't need to know. Um, I think it was Germany, it was certainly one of the um, European countries that have adopted these. They didn't tell the public and they questioned them afterwards and 90% didn't know they'd been overtaking a longer vehicle. So there's the productivity benefits, CO2, fuel. It's kind of a no-brainer really, but that message won't be put out there in a positive way unless it's done correctly. Agreed. Also, drivers. When it comes to the, the driving element of this, we, I mean, we've just driven it ourselves, it's fine going forwards and a little bit tricky going backwards. Yeah, all right, so it's going to need a bit of training um, and with that the drivers need more wages. Um, I don't think it needs a test on its own, it doesn't need a separate license. The way I would do it is say if you've been driving um, C plus E for a set amount of years then you can move up to, uh, to, to one of these. Yeah, adding that extra barrier with a new Tesla C plus E plus would become complicated it, it, and, it, and probably would it cut would. people off wouldn't it? I mean they, they do that in Australia but then you're talking about much longer combinations. Yeah so just going back to that point I made at the beginning about it having to be a trial over a long period of time and at 60 tonnes to make it productive it also needs to be um, flexible in the combination of how the truck and the trailer are set yeah, up. Absolutely like in Sweden operators can get to 25.25 meters however they want so they might choose to go down this route with a prime mover and a semi-trailer, which is incredibly flexible, mm. because of course your prime mover does your urban deliveries during the day, then you hook up to the trailer for your night trunk, or tractor unit and two semi-trailers. Again, perfectly flexible. Yeah, but it's, it's going to be expensive, that's the problem. Um, you are talking about investing in new equipment because you can't just have regular axle weights, it's got to be uprated to deal with the, the, the right. additional load. But it is cheaper than the alternative, which is a, a brand new hydrogen infrastructure for the country that's going to take years. That's right. Well, we all know we've got to do something to um, reduce our carbon output. And this is the most simple thing. It, it really is. And it just takes a politician to sign a piece of paper today and then tomorrow we can start making savings of 15, 20 yeah, percent. Um, yeah, as you just said, with hydrogen, it's years away and the expense I mean, I've got no doubt hydrogen will come, but this will work now. In the meantime, absolutely.